Hello everyone, good morning, welcome or good afternoon wherever you are. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to show you how to create a simple background. Um, you don't need many uh, products to create a lovely background so we'll just do it with our inks and just show you how you can do something simple to create a background with the products that you have. So this was the journal page we created in the previous video. So we're going to create a journal page maybe with similar colours but I'll show you how to do a similar technique. Now this is a moleskin journal. Um, it's around about five and a quarter by eight each pages. Now I've got this page I can add something to afterwards or I could even add this to this. No, um, yes we could. But can you? No, I'll do it on this page. Stop talking to yourself Tracy so that you can see better on this page. So what we're going to do first is just add a little bit of text in the background. So I'm going to use my Take Flight stamp set and I'm going to use some Versamark ink. Now the Versamark ink is a sticky ink pad which allows you to sprinkle embossing powder. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my anti-static bag. Now you don't need the anti-static bag it's only if you've been handling the page like I have with my paws, you know, my little fingertips, which may not be as clean as they should be. So I'm just using that anti-static bag, which means the embossing powder will stick where I want it to and not stray embossing powder everywhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, Use the Take Flight stamp set and I'm going to use some of the text that's on the background of that. And I'm not going to be too precise. I'm just going to add the text in the background. Let's add a little bit of this text here. So I'm just picking random little pieces of text, which is really good because you can't actually see them. And now I've added those three random pieces. I'll just grab a piece of copy of paper. And we'll just sprinkle our white embossing powder just so that we can see where we're going and where we want to add more. So I'm using white embossing powder. Mine's an old white embossing powder. Nothing, nothing special. In fact, very old. So now you can see, no you can't, there you go. You can see where I've added my stamping. Let's just tip that back. And what I'm going to try and do is show you that backgrounds don't have to be complicated and you don't need any special product to create the background because if you've got inks, you can do them. If you haven't got inks and you're not an ink pad person, use your watercolours. If you haven't got watercolours or ink pads, then what about your water reactive pens like Ecoline pens? You can use them. So we can use what you've got. So let's take our stamp again. Don't put your stamp down like I do because then you can't find it again. I've just, <laughs> I've got a crystal glass <laughs> for another technique later on my desk. And I've just touched the paper on it and it's just gone ting, just like that. Do you like the sound effects? I'm good with the sound effects. So I'm just adding some of the background from my little Take Flight stamp set. Just adding some of that. Then let's sprinkle again because that allows us to see, you know, where we're going with our composition. And with you using a journal page, it's, it's that one there that I did there. You, it's, it's difficult to keep everything in camera. I think that I'm quite happy with that. Nothing complicated, just nice and simple. And then we're just going to heat the page. So 
So we're just going to melt that embossing powder. Let's just heat the heat tool up. Just heat that up. There we go. We'll just heat our white embossing. Let's just lift that up a little bit. Once it starts going, it will go quite quickly. Just with these smaller heat, to heat tools, which I quite like, it takes a little bit longer. Then again, I'm not in a rush. Everything at the moment, I see a lot of um, people saying, oh, you know, you can make this project in five minutes. Sometimes it's not about making projects in five minutes. Yes, sometimes it is. We've only got a short amount of time. But other times, it is about enjoying the process and creating something yourself and having the satisfaction that you've created it yourself. So just heating these areas up, just so that it melts. And sometimes I have to lift the page up because it's a little bit difficult to see. where it's melting, especially sort of white on white or cream or whatever. We've got that all now. So we can tilt our page just to see if we've got that all. I think we have. And then we can just create a nice, easy backdrop. Now, if you haven't got distressed you know don't put a piece of acetate down because you won't find it unless you put a little bit of washi on it if you don't have the i've got distress oxides you can use distress inks if you haven't got distress oxides or inks then you can use your watercolors or your reactive pens water reactive pens and you can just place your bit of your pen just on to a piece of acetate if you don't have a piece of acetate use the packaging from an A7 stamp set, that's absolutely fine. And then what we're going to do is just spritz this with a bit of water and then easiest background ever. You just add this then to your background. You just smoosh it onto your background. And it's one of the easiest background techniques you can do. So just add your lemon, which in this case is mustard seed. And then you can see you've got these little bits. Can you see with my hand there? You've got these little dots of bits left over. Simply dab those onto your page, the little dabs. That's it. Now, nothing complicated in that at all. Now, so that the colours don't mix too much, I'm just going to wipe my acetate sheet. You could add that to another page. Now, nothing complicated there at all. What I'm going to do is just dry that a little bit, not too much because I don't want to affect the embossing. And then I'm going to use an orange. So I'm going to use a little bit of orange, which is spiced marmalade. So let's use a little bit of spiced marmalade. When I first put it down, because my acetate is not clean, I'm going to admit it's uh, a bit grubby. So now I can add the orange. And if you want, you can just dab this, just adding the orange. Just dab that. And because I want it to be a little darker in the orange, let's just give this another dry. And let me see if I've got something that is deeper and more orange which which one have we got now and because i'm looking for it now i won't find the red have i got a red here no so we're just going to try and find a red Go. 
you know, it's always the case, isn't it? When you're looking for something, you can't find it. When you're looking for a, a colour, you can't find it. Right, because I've got that yellow on there, if I use a little bit of red, you'll get oranges as well. So I'm going to use candied apple. So let's use a bit of candied apple. You can just use a tiny bit of ink, like I'm doing, like so, and just spritz. And then you can just smoosh that with your finger. Look at this, nothing too complicated at all. So you can use your pens, you can use your watercolours, just to create yourself another background. And this is where stamps come in wonderfully as well because your stamps you can use year after year you don't have to buy any special product you can use them year after year and they're there and they don't date so you can keep using your stamps to create your backgrounds as well okay so i've now got my red on there so let's just give that a little bit of a, a dry now if you want to you can add a little bit of wet so that it's all wet and even and if it's wet enough you can even blow some of your ink to add to your background if you don't have this because you're just using inks you could use a straw so again you don't need anything special no special papers there you go you're not getting in too much of a mess so then you can create a background and you can add movement to that background as well so now i'm going to add a little bit of miracle where are we so i'm going to take a little bit of wilted violet but i'm just going to dry this a little bit there we go just take a little bit of the wilted violet just a little look how much that is just a tiny bit again nothing complicated your hands are not in a mess and then i'm just going to add a little bit of the of the purple just to give a little bit more darkness and depth to that background so again creating a background nothing too complicated so we can give that a dry again so then you don't get any muddy colors they stay nice and bright so let's say you want another effect so let's add a little bit of this here add a little bit of water take your water on your finger and you just get your own splats so you don't need no special tools just use your fingers and you can get your own splat and then if you're not happy with that splat just use your straw and make it look more like a splat and spread that across there you go you just spread them across and you've made your own splats with your finger again don't need nothing special you've now created your own splats with your finger there we go so say you want to add some circles so let's take the ink pad these are products you've already got at home now take this and what i'm going to do now is i've got like a brandy glass don't tell my husband but i use this for techniques <laughs> So I can take the ink now on my brandy glass or a jam jar and I can add my own circles. I'll lift this up so you can see. Just add, just add it. Now, let me lift this up because you've got a pale circle in the background. Let me add, it's just here. I've got a pale circle. What if you want it? A little bit darker okay let's take our ink pad and let's just press the glass on 
to the ink pad. There we go, we got it all round, right. There you go, you've now got your circle a little bit darker. Nothing special needed. There we go, we've got our circles on there. You can keep going over just to make it a little bit darker. What if you sit there and go, well, it, it isn't really dark enough, Tracy. That's okay. Grab any pen. So what pen have I got? Um, look in the cupboard. Have a look what pens you've got, just so that you can see there's a circle on there. So say your circle isn't dark enough. Oh, I've got some Posca pens here. So let's get that working and let's just draw. There you go. I've now got some circles on there. Your own circles, nothing. Just use the pens that you've got. You don't need to buy the anything special. Use what pens that you've got in your collection. Just so that you can see. We can now add a little bit of text again in the colours that we've used. So we'll take our Take Flight stamp again and let's take um, some picked raspberry. So we'll take some of that picked raspberry and now you can add some of the picked raspberry text. I will lift this up so that you can see. And the advantage with stamps is that once you've got them, you don't need to buy them again. So let's add a little bit of the text here. So what you can see now is you've got your pink text, your white text, bits of pink text and your white text. Wonderful. Just works really nicely. So then, if I want to, I can use a stencil. Let's grab a stencil. Any stencils that you've got in your collection. And then I can add a little bit more definition. So let's take the pink. You can use sponges. You don't have to have ink blending tools. Use your sponges. So I'm going to take the pink and now I can add a little bit more definition with the odd number here. If you've only got alphabet ones, then use alphabet ones. Let's add a little bit of red as well. That's just, so now, I'm adding a little bit of death initian. So take my pink again. And it's so satisfying when you've created the background yourself. I think it is, it's, it's lovely. Let's add a little eight up here. So just add the eight. So we've got some lovely layers and definition. Um, let's add a couple of numbers just down here with the pink. There we go. So we've now got a little bit more definition. Just beautiful. Then to give that some vibrancy, I'm going to use my Posca pen. You don't have to use your Posca pen. If you haven't got a Posca pen, why not use some watered down gesso? So if I get gesso. You don't have to use a Posca pen if you haven't got a Posca pen. But if you've got gesso, white paint, something like that. Remember the, the oxides will react a little bit to white paint or your... Um, oxide inks but sometimes that adds to the whole thing so I'll just grab my 
fan brush. If you haven't got a fan brush, don't worry, use what you've got. So let's add a little bit more water. And then I can just add little bits. Of my gesso to the background. So just. Little bit more water. There we go. Just wipe that up. We'll just give this a little bit of a, a clean because for once for once they're half decent brushes, which is just unheard of for me. I don't have half half decent brushes, but we'll just just going to wipe my area a little bit just so that I haven't got paint everywhere let's just move Ian goes mad at me because I end up with paint everywhere right so we can just work in a clean area just so that we don't spread anything anywhere so now I've got a beautiful background that I've created myself and you can see the white gesso on there. I love my Posca pen because it gives me a really good splatter. So I will use my Posca pen as well because it brings that whiteness and that lightness to the project just so that you can see that. And now we need a focal image. So I'm going to use my little... Bird. I'm going to use my stamp set Quirky Birds. What did I say about trying to keep everything clean? So I'm going to use Quirky Birds again, TE10. Now I'm going to use that one again, I think. Or am I going to use the heart one? Let's use the bird with the heart. So let's just take our acrylic block and let's just hit, dry our page a little bit I've got something on my finger I don't know what it is so just give that a little bit of a, a dry don't overheat because you don't want to heat that embossing powder again we'll just dab that blob just so that we don't stamp into that now I'm not looking for a perky Perky, perky, perfect image because I can stamp the beard out again over the top. I'll just ink my little beard. Now you've got lots of texture on this page and I need to be aware of that. So I can see there's a blob of, um, what's it called? Spit it out, Tracy. Gesso. just under my little beard. Now you've got all these layers. All you need to be aware of is that you just need to give that time to rest. What's hilarious is I've splattered paint on my um, iPad. There we go. Now, you could colour that in, but we're going to put the beard over the top because I don't have to cut the legs out now. But I could quite easily colour that in and it would stand out. So let's just get rid of that bit of gesso in there. There we go. Now let's just grab a piece of white card and let me just move my iPad out of the way. Move that just up there. And then we'll just grab a piece of white card. And we'll just stamp our beard. Now you don't want too much bulk on that page. So let's just, we only, we only want the beard without the legs. That just doesn't sound right, does it? So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a dry, just so that my pencils don't pick up 
the black ink. Now, if you haven't got coloured pencils, why not colour with your ink pads or your water reactive pens? So I'm just going to add my Process Red PC994, which I used in my previous page. And then I'm going to use my hot pink PC993. These are Prisma colour pencils. And I'm just going to use a little bit of yellow, um, which is lemon yellow PC915. And I'm just laying the colour down like I did in my previous video, very lightly. So then, and I mean, look at that background you've created in 20 minutes. I just love it. It's so satisfying when you've created it yourself. So just adding another layer of the, the deep colour, then going to the pink and coming into the first colour. And then we'll use the yellow. And then, then we'll hunt for our scissors. And we'll just cut the beard out. We don't need to cut the legs out because we've got those on the page now and I'll just leave a little bit of a white border just to make it pop a little bit more I'm using my Pergamano scissors that are a curved scissors just like those nail scissors that you can get that are curved. I can just work a little bit better with the curved. I'm then going to just add little touches of the white just to the hearts and then we can add our beard on the top which then pops more and then what I can do just to make a little bit more where are we we'll just grab some black cotton so it's ready. Just so that's ready. Just bright some black cotton. I can then use a black pen. You don't have to have a micron pen. You can use a ballpoint pen if you wish. And then let's just move this a bit. And then I can just go round just with a bit of black just to give a little bit of definition Oop, nothing precise a little bit of black on there and then just grab my adhesive now I'm, I'm going to use the pin flare but I'm not using it as dimension because I don't want too much dimension in there it's just so that with it being a bit more gloopy it'll grab hold of that cotton Place that over the top and the black cotton just makes that pop a little bit more. You can even, you know, if you've got die cuts, I don't think I've got a circle here, have I? Oh, I have. If you've got die cuts, you can even add your 
circles underneath. But what I'm trying to do is show you how you can do it without having too many products. And I'm not that bothered about that anyway. I like the, the cotton. Okay. So I'm trying to show you just how versatile stamps are. So we're going to add a little bit of shading. Again, if you don't have ink tense pencils, use a little biro and just scribble some lines underneath. So there you are. I want I want it to be all inclusive so that all of you can craft. So just add a little bit there, just like so. And then in the shop, I've just put these in on my website. I've got these wood chips. Now, they're, they're not thick, look, they're thin. Some are small, some are wafer thin. But I've got these in to try and get some cheap embellishments. They're £2 for 12 pieces and they're on my website. And what I'm going to do is take one of the chips, maybe that one, and they're just chip pieces. And then I'm going to take, I'd already put it out. I'm going to take the word from my birds here and use the word imagine. So I've got that on my acrylic block. And I'm going to take the black ink. Now, yes, there are lots of wood pieces on the market, but I just wanted some that are not too thick. I missed the eye there. Imagine and the E. There we go. So I've now got Imagine just on my little wood chip. And then I can add this here. And it's because it's not super thick, I can now add it to my journal or my cards. Some are slightly thicker, which is perfect for a card. Some are just wafer thin. Some are sort of got cracks in them. But you get 12 pieces for £2. Is it 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Hang on a minute. Can't even count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yeah, you get 12 pieces. And I'll put them in a little brown bag that you can probably decorate as well. Right, so let's add the adhesive. I'm not going to use the pin flare as um, dimension. I'm just going to add it because it's a good adhesive. Just add that to our page. Just so that you can see got our little beard on there and then um, I'm just going to add because obviously this has got the gel the pin flare on it so it's not going to be stuck yet so I'm just going to add a little bit of ink tense pencil just around there let's hope I might have some moisture still on here oh I have so just blend that out just so we've got a little bit of shading under the little Imagine. Just so that you can see that. And when I close my page, there's not too much bulk. And I can, they're perfect for cards as well. Just so that you can, you can see that. So we've got our journal page. So what if you wanted to create a card in exactly the same way? But you wanted to do something really simple. Let's just move our journal page out of the way. So exactly the same, <laughs> apart from the fact Tracy can't find her acetate. That piece of card is rather grubby. Do we have another one? That's because I've had so many things on my desk. So we can take... So you've now got your technique for your background. So you can take oh. a 
So you can take your, I've got my A7 stamp set, Take Flight. What about doing the whole thing? Yes, so I can ink the whole thing. Let's put it on an acrylic block. Don't let's scrimp corners. Let's take the Take Flight stamp set. I'm going to lose that acetate. You do know that, don't you? So take, I'm going to take the Take Flight stamp set and use the whole of it. And just ink your stamp with your Versa mark. Like so. And then just press that on there. Now, if you're just starting out and you've never crafted before, I would recommend you only buy a couple of products, one or two colours, one stamp, and just see how you enjoy it. Don't buy any expensive bundles until you decide that you like what you're doing. So I've got that stamped on there. I've got this copy of paper here. Let's... Just add our, so I've got my white embossing on there now. There we go, let's just, so I'm going to heat that now. I'll just give that time to heat up. I've got so much mess on my non-stick craft sheet. Let's lift our card up. give that a heat now some people say they like to heat from underneath some say they like to heat from the top I like to heat from the top I don't really see much difference I know some people say it looks smoother if you heat it from underneath it doesn't make enough difference for me and plus when I do it from underneath I'm not watching where I'm going and I often burn my fingers that's just me personally we're all different in the things that we like and the way that we do the techniques everybody's different you'll find something that works for you. So I'm just turning the card around. Once you've heated the embossing, just make sure that you move that card around because you don't want to overheat that embossing powder. And you can tell when you've completely done it because it's all, I've missed a bit there. because it's all nice and glossy just so that you can see that just wait for it to cool down a little bit then we can grab our acetate which I'm going to lose eventually and then we can go with our mustard seed a little bit of mustard seed I definitely don't need any more mustard seed so we can put the lid on that And then you can smoosh your ink just over your card like so and if I want to add more of the yellow I can just move this down there we go again you can have another piece of card at the side just so that you can use that ink up now you don't want to overheat this again because you don't want to end up sort of affecting the embossing. So if you want to, you can just dab some of that moisture off there. And then we'll go to a little bit of our candied apple. A little bit of the candied apple. Again, I don't need too much ink and I don't need too much water. And you can just smoosh your ink just over your card. And it's so satisfying, you can see that the ink, and when you've got the red and the yellow, it will also make the orange colours as well. Give that a little bit of a waft, just so that you keep some of those colours, and they don't all blend to make other colours. You can dab this excess off and build your layers up slowly. 
So I'm then going to grab my picked raspberry. Now these, that, oh it is picked raspberry. Do you know, I was thinking that doesn't look like picked raspberry. So we'll just take a little bit of the picked raspberry. And as we know, the pink and the yellow again are going to make orange. So you just, that's why I'm just drying a little bit, just so that you get some different tones of colour. And just dab up. I'll then take a little bit of the purple, which is wilted violet, just to give. And can you see how little of the wilted violet I'm using? We don't want to make any, any mud. So we'll just add a little bit of the wilted violet just to our background. Just give that a little bit of a dry. And you can just dab up and you can see how it's appearing in the background. You can just add a little bit more of that purple. And then just add a bit more of that darkness. Look how you spread it out. It just spreads out lovely. And then you can just add little dots of the colour just to your card, just to give it a different feel. And then just let that sit on one side just for a moment. And then we'll take our little bird again. We'll just grab a piece of card. looking for my black ink then and we'll just take our little bird stamp our bird now I can't because we've got obviously we've got more of an area now it's stamped in white so I don't really want to stamp the black onto this white because the white will just resist the stamp so I'm going to cut the bird out she says but goodness knows where she just puts the scissors there we go so I'm going to cut out my little bird and I'm just going to leave a little white border because that makes it much easier to cut out And it's up to you if you colour then cut or cut then colour, whatever works for you. I've still got one thing to add to my journal page. Just cut out a little bit. And then I'll lose myself when I'm cutting out. There we go. Let's just trim that a bit. There we go, so now I've got my little bird. Now on that one, do I fancy something a little bit more purple? Let's move, I've got that much stuff everywhere. I've got so much stuff everywhere. So let's just grab, let's grab a little bit of purple. So what about you? And yeah. So this time, I'm not going to bother sharpening. I'm still going to use the hot pink and I'm going to use, oh dear me, something purple. Palmer Violet, PC1008. Do you like how it took me ages to read that? So I'm going to use my Palmer Violet. Just 
university. And then I'm going to use the hot pink again, like we did before. But this time I'm sort of leaving the hearts uncoloured. A bit more faffy if I leave them uncoloured, but I don't mind that. So let's just go and add that Palmer Violet again. So a little bit more depth of colour. And this time, just leaving the hearts uncoloured. But still coming into that that purple colour with the pink. So still coming into that. Just add a little bit more now of that depth. Just so that it's got a bit more depth to it. And then we'll come in with the pink straight in to the purple just so you can blend those two colors and then let's bring in my white and just drag a bit we actually need a little bit more, a little bit more of that pink so it's a little bit lighter here so I will just blend the pink with my white and then I've sort of got the white hearts that are already visible that I can then add to my project but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more colour to this background so I'm going to take the acetate and a good layer of the picked raspberry and you can see that colours dried more so I'm going to add a little bit more pink just over the top and you can just dab anything that you don't want but if you leave it to dry naturally, then you're going to get more depth of colour. I'm just going to give that a little waft. Of colour. And just dry that a bit. Just bend your card. Show it who's, who's boss. So then just waft on the wings a little bit. So I can then just add a little bit of yellow with my pencil just to some of the areas. So this is just my Prisma pencil, just adding some yellow to the areas. And then I can just add a little bit more yellow just to the clock, just here and there, just a little bit. I'm only pressing very lightly because I don't want to break down that card too much. So I'm just adding some yellow to different areas. just to give a little bit more definition of colour. Look how the yellow pencil, that just gives it a little bit more brightness. And you've got a couple more techniques. So if you do something in white, you can then colour it afterwards. And I'll show you what I mean with another floral. So I'm just going to add my little bird here, like so. 
So we'll just add you with some normal adhesive. So we'll add this with some normal adhesive. There we go. So just with my tonic adhesive. So then the key is in the background. Just stamp that there. And then I'm going to use, so again, you can use your jars or anything like that. I'm going to use my cutout circles, hopefully one without too many ridges. So I'm going to add it there. And then she loses a black pen because she gets so engrossed. There it is. You can use a biro if you wish. My aim is to show just how versatile, how really versatile stamps can be. And how, yes, you have an initial outlay, but even if you buy one stamp, how much you can get from that one stamp by just creating a background from acetate inks, pens, watercolours, whatever you want to add. So we've got a circle around our bird. And then I'm going to add my pink pencil just into the circle. And I want to Remove the myth that creating backgrounds is difficult. I want to show you just how he easy it is to create some backgrounds. Even if you've only got a few products, but just to show you just how versatile stamps are and they've been around years. And if you've got images that don't date, it works beautifully. So I'm going to use these are the colours I've used before. This is the process red. So I'm just doing a little bit more of the process red. And I'm going to go back to the pink. Now I'm not pressing too hard so I don't break that down. Now, you don't have to have pencil crayons. You don't have to have expensive ones. Yes, if quality pencils do make a difference, but we can't all afford everything all at once. So then I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow just to add a little bit of the yellow here and there. And then I'm going to use that purple one I use, the Palmer Violet, and just add a little bit of the Palmer Violet just here. Just a little bit of that Palmer Violet. Then we'll go back to the process red. Just to give it a little bit more depth. Going back into that darker colour, just so that you can blend that out. Then we'll go to the hot pink. Just to give a little bit more of that colour. And then we'll add a little bit of that yellow. just to give it a little bit more. I'm not even smoothing out as much as I would. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow to the beard, just a tiny touch, just so that you can see, just lovely. We're then going to add a little bit of shading to that beard. 
and then you frantically you look for your water brush. Just take a little bit of moisture off and then we can just sort of kiss, just touch. And then you can dab a bit off, and just go in again. There we go. I'm then going to use my Posca pen just to add some white splatters. If you don't get your Posca pen flowing, then it won't work. You need your Posca pen flowing. We've just let that dry a bit and then I've got a little one of my wood chips again and I'm going to add the Imagine just with the wood chip and now if you want to you can add a little bit of colour to the wood chip so that it's got a bit of the colour from the background. Let's take a little bit of the pink, so I can add a little bit of the pink as well. Just add, there we go, and we'll just give that a little bit of a dry. There we go, and then we'll just add this to our background. There's no weight to these. Just add that to our card. Let me just dab that ink because we don't want to have any wet ink just lying there. So we've then got that Imagine. And then if we add this, Tracy can't pick it up, to a black mat. Now, you've had a lot of moisture on this card, so you really do need to add adhesive to the middle of the card. You can use your double-sided tape if you're a double-sided tape person, and then you don't need to worry about holding it down. But I'm not a double-sided tape person because I very rarely get it bang on in the right place first time. I like to be able to move it. Move it, move it. Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, so that then just adds there. Just lovely. Then add that to a five by seven. So this was four by six. Then I've added a quarter of inch mat. And then I'm adding it to a five by seven inch card blank. to a five by seven card blank. Again, I never get it bang on in the right place straight away. I like to move it. So then you have your card, which we haven't finished yet. Let's bring in our journal spread. We've then got our journal spread. And I just want to grab the birds again, which now I can't find because my desk is a complete and utter mess. Now I've just moved the camera. Let's bring that back. So I'm going to use this little heart that is on the little quirky bird stamp set. Let's move this one. So I'm going to stamp this in black onto a spare piece of card, trying to keep everything in camera so you can see it, which is not easy. So let's just take the black, I want this stamped twice, so we'll just take that heart. Place 
I love that heart. Let's place that back. And we'll just cut out our heart. Now I don't want a white edge with the heart. I do want it to just show as the black. one for this page and then I want one for my card I love it because then your stamps you can use as embellishments as well Not that there's any room to show you anything at the moment. So let's bring in our card and our project. So my little heart is going here. Oh, I've now moved my little imagine, which we really don't want to do. I'm just going to add that there. So I'm going to add the little heart. Just there. I'm just going to press that down just till it grabs hold because there's lots of moisture on there. Okay, and then let's take this black heart here and add it to our journal page. And about a lovely hour, just plain. Again, just holding that there because I've got that piece of cotton just in the background. I'm just going to add a little bit of shading. We've got that embossing on there, so it'll only pick a little bit of that up. And there we go. And let's add a little bit of shading here. Take off the excess, just bring that around a little bit. There we go. And then we'll just grab that Posca pen just to make sure that the heart is part of the project. That's better. A little bit, there we go, on the wood piece. And then you've got a couple of projects. So you've got your card which just works beautifully and then you've got your journal spread just works beautifully as well so obviously my imagine is not it's not quite dry yet because if we use that it takes a while to dry <coughs> and what I would do then is go back in just with your gel pen and just add those white touches again on your journal page just add them again just to give the bird a little bit of a pop and that's your pieces finished so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll give it a try. I mean, look at our splatters with our finger. They just work really well. Anyway, love to all. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.